As this crummy weather continues, I've been thinking a little bit about grades. Take the next few minutes with a grain of salt, but have a think. Comment below. So Seb Boyne, is that how you say his name? Anyway, has recently done his Verdon Gorge project DNA, and it looks massively awesome and very, very, very hard. He's definitely someone that I find quite inspiring with his dedication to new route development. Seb writes on Instagram about the ascent and inevitably the grade. He compares it to other routes that he's done at around that 38 9B plus level and isn't really sure what grade to give this new one. He says if he gave it 38, it'd be a whole chunk harder than anything else that he's done at that level. And so maybe it's 9C. But this is where he writes, however, proposing that would be a risk. A risk? I'm not really sure where the risk is here. I remember hearing an interview with Adam Andre where he talks about silence and its grade and says that if it was ever downgraded using the same sequence that he used, it would be the most embarrassing thing in the world for him. Why? Before I go too far though, I need to fully admit to having these similar feelings myself. And I've spoken to a bunch of people that have developed roots and boulders over the years and they've all said similar things. Heck, I have seen people fret about a grade that they put on a moonboard boulder or on the woody. We're all cut from the same cloth and it seems crazy. The crux of this issue is where did these feelings come from? I've come to a few conclusions and I'm not really sure if it answers the question for everyone and maybe it just shines more of a light on my own insecurities than it does for anyone else. I really don't think that there are too many people out there throwing high grades on things in the hopes that it brings them some sort of fame and fortune before a second ascensionist can come along and tear it down. If that kind of behavior is out there, you would imagine that it would weed itself out and it would become a bit of a boy who cries wolf type situation. Let's all just assume that most people are good natured and giving an honest stab in the dark when they give their grade proposal. Cause really that's all it is, a stab in the dark. On the other hand, someone may just truly not believe themselves capable of climbing a higher grade, but I don't see this situation playing out nearly as much as the ego shielding, I'm gonna grade it as low as I possibly can to avoid a downgrade. There's so much that goes into a first ascent. You're bringing in all of your strengths and weaknesses and all of your past experiences to this new route. And you're doing your best to try and find out a method that works for you. Perhaps you get too attached to a sequence that you think is really cool and someone else comes along and sees it another way because they get to come in with all the information that you have unloaded and they add their own flavor to it. The evolution of sequence finding is inevitable and if you didn't find the best method and someone else does, that's totally fine. It's just a part of the process and if the difficulty of a sequence comes down by a grade, it takes nothing away from your ascent. An awesome example of this is with Stefano Gasolfi's ascent of bibliography last year. Alex Megos has spent 60 days on this piece of climbing and when he finally does it, says it's absolutely the hardest thing that he's ever climbed and gives it the grade of 39. Stefano Gasolfi comes along, takes Alex's information adds a bit of his own and finds some better beta and hey, he gets it done pretty quick. He then suggests that probably it only felt like 38 for him. Alex says, huh, cool, good one, man. That's awesome. And yeah, maybe it is. What a boss move. The thing that can't be taken away from you and is with you forever is the process. And I don't mean to turn this into a preach here, but that's a pretty special thing. You've learned from that journey and when you finally clip the anchors or pop over the lip of the boulder, that feeling is the best. Don't let some retrospective downgrade get in the way of that. The ups and downs of the process are properly special and moments that are just for you. If you went and did a route and you really enjoyed it and someone else said that they didn't really like the route, does your enjoyment and experience of that route diminish? I doubt it. And I don't know if this is a fair comparison, but it feels like maybe it is. I heard a Jerry Seinfeld interview the other week where he's talking about his writing process. And he said that whenever he felt like he wrote something really quite good, he would sit with it for 24 hours before telling anyone else about it because he really wanted to sit there with it himself and not have someone else's opinion of it muddy 
the feeling of success that he had. I think that we can draw a fairly straight line between this writing process and our own experiences and achievements in climbing. So I say to Seb and everyone else, give it the risky grade. At the very least, it may just attract a bit of attention on the route and people can go and have a great time on it. And if a grade comes off in the process, that's okay because you still had that awesome process on the route yourself. I guess just do your best to not let grades be the main overall driving force behind your climbing. I know they definitely can get in the way at times and I'm definitely motivated by grades. Absolutely, they're an awesome metric to have there to see how your climbing is going. But what about the fight that you put up? That's the real win here. I don't think any of us want to climb in a world where people are so fearful of a downgrade that they essentially end up sandbagging. That if their route was to be downgraded, it would mean X, Y, or Z. Because if that's the case, it speaks to something much sadder and deeper in our climbing society than just putting a silly grade on a random piece of rock that sticks out of the earth.